Revenue Service has, for quite a long time, we've had the traditional privacy office, a privacy advocate to address the needs of the taxpayers in relation to the Privacy Act. But in 2007, those needs grew um, in response to a number of different incidents. A lot of you will recall the, the VA laptop law that is really what opened everyone's eyes to the, the needs to address data breaches and data loss. And so, um, and also in response to the Office of Management, um, excuse me, the o OMB um, directive to, to address data breaches. And so the IRS um, expanded the role of, of the privacy advocate and, and opened the Office of Privacy, Information Protection, and Data Security. And um, within that office, there are several key Within that office, there are several uh, key roles that are addressed, and, and one of them is my office, which is the Incident Management Office, and that is the office that handles the data breaches and data losses and provides notification to IRS victims of data loss. And then we also have an office um, of identity protection, and that covers identity theft issues throughout the IRS. And then there's still the traditional Office of Privacy that handles Office of Privacy issues, um, that reviews privacy impact assessments, and uh, handles our uh, Social Security number elimination and reduction initiatives, and other traditional privacy initiatives. And then another office that was also uh, brand new for the IRS was the Online Fraud Detection and Prevention Office. And that is our basically our anti-phishing office. And, and they uh, address the phishing sites that spook the IRS and help shut down those sites. And so those are the offices that sprung up in July of 2007. And we have been working to um, address all of those needs in, in the last two years. And, we basically started from that skeleton staff that was addressing the traditional privacy advocate needs of about seven people, and now we have about 85 people in our office. So it's been quite a challenge just organizationally to, to grow in the last two years, but also to meet those needs. And so we sent out our first uh, data loss notices in September of 2007. So in two months, basically, we, we um, were able to stand up the, the data loss office and, and send out those notices. And so the, the incident notification process is the, the main thing that my office deals with. And uh, we, um, when, when a data breach is reported, we, we take a look at the data breach, uh, you know, do the risk assessment. We have a committee that takes a look at that. And, um, and if victim notification is, is required, then we provide notification, we provide the uh, adequate level of credit monitoring for the victims, and uh, we also have a unit that will respond to the taxpayer if they have needs that they need to call in for after the fact. And um, we also you know, provide analysis of the incidents and look for, for trends and needs and, and address that in you know, the, the other areas of our office for um, further data loss prevention uh, actions. And, and the IRS has also <coughs> gone um, further in providing notification to victims of other incidents for beyond data loss. Um, when we find victims of phishing incidents, for example. Uh, we also provide notification to those victims as well and, and let them know that they could be victims of identity theft through that process. Or <coughs> with a refund crime incident um, where we find that someone has uh, intercepted the taxpayer's refund and, and tried to have the refund put into their bank account. And that also could have been through a phishing incident as well. Um, we will notify the, the good taxpayer in that instance and let them know that they could be a victim and how to protect themselves in those instances. So we've gone beyond 
the required notifications through the guidelines and, and uh, notified other victims um, in certain instances. And then we have um, other initiatives that, that we're doing, and I mentioned briefly, uh, one of our biggest efforts is the efforts <coughs> eliminate or reduce the use of the social security number. For the IRS, it's quite a challenge since that's really what, what keeps us running. <laughs> but but we, we are trying to, there's a lot that we can do and a lot that we have done. We, we have reduced um, on, on more than 8 million letters and notices that go out to taxpayers. We have reduced the use of the SSN in the last year. So that is something we're doing, and, and one of the big ones that we're trying to get out um, as I speak is the uh, redaction of the SSN on the Form 1099. And so hopefully that will take place by the end of this year, and that, that regulation will, will go out. So, And then we also just try to co collaborate and do efforts just like we're doing right now is to, to work for private industry and to have um, our forms just last week we had the identity protection forum sponsored by the irs and we attended the federal privacy summit and we go out to the irs tax forums and talk to practitioners and let them know what we're doing and, and um, one of the most responded to us that we have is that online fraud detection and prevention office that, that we work with and i didn't have slides or anything but i can just hold this up and you can see with the phishing incidents. This right here was 2005. This right here is 2009. That's the number of phishing incidents that the IRS experienced and that we've shut down. And so, you know, the, the criminals are, are more active, but so are we. And, and so um, that, that, that's what I call our sexy office. I don't do that work, but it's really fun to talk about what they do. And um, so those are just some of the efforts that we do to to try to protect the taxpayers, and, and I can talk about it more later. <laughs>